Hello and welcome to Module 8 of the Linux Board Porting Online Series. This is the first in the final set of three modules where we will be debugging the Linux kernel inside CCS using JTAG. In this first module, we're going to install the SDK, which will also be installing Minicom and the TFTP server. And once that's done, we will rebuild the Linux kernel, being sure to include all of the debugging symbols that we'll need in order to do a JTAG debug. Before we rebuild the Linux kernel, there's a couple of utilities that we're going to need in order to debug the kernel using JTAG. We're going to want Minicom, which is a serial terminal utility, and we're going to want TFTP server running on Ubuntu. Both of these can be installed using the installation script of the software development kit. Open a terminal with Control-Alt-T, change into the SDK directory, and you'll notice that there's a script called setup.sh. Before I run this script, I want to do an apt git update. This will update the aptitude package manager. So this setup script is going to use the aptitude package manager to install Minicom and the TFTP. Then um, you can run this with sudo actually because it's going to be installing components on the system. Change the username to user. Uh, that's the username on this system. It's only because I ran under sudo that it pulled up root. Here it's going to give us a NFS target file system, which is fine. I'll accept the default. It says make sure you have sudo access, which we do. That was how we ran it, so I'll press return to continue. Once it's done, it just gives a little bit of information. Press return to continue. This is setting up the NFS server and changing etc. exports to make the newly created directory available over NFS. So that's fine. Let's plus return. And it's actually restarted the NFS server. Now here you can see this is an important step for us. It's going to set up a TFTP server and it's going to make the default directory, which is the directory that files are pulled out of, slash TFTP boot. So that's important information. I'll press enter to accept that default. And then we do have sudo access, so I'll press enter to continue. And then here it's going to set up Minicom. Actually, on our system, the serial port that we want to use is TTY USB 0. So this is because I'm going to use a Beagle board that does USB over, I'm sorry, that does serial over USB, and it shows up on the device node dev TTY USB 0. Um, you'll want to check, depending on the system you're on, which is the correct device node for you. Here, uh, this is the IP address that I have on my system, but I'm going to change the system to use a static address after we're done with this install. So I'm going to put 192.168.1.1. That's what we're going to set the IP address to as a static IP address. So I'm going to enter that instead. And we're going to set it up to do a TFTP boot. So I'll select one. The root file system, I'm going to put that on the SD card because we're not modifying it. You, you could do it via NFS, but it's just an unnecessary complication. So what we're going to do is put our SPL and U-boot on the SD card along with the root file system. And then we'll boot the kernel over TFTP only because we're going to be modifying it, assumably, if, if we're doing a debug step. So I'll put in a 2 here. This is the, um, the name. I'm going to put in uImage. uImage is when we rebuild what we'll use. So it'll automatically boot uImage from the card. And I'm not going to bother with the Minicom script. 
Um, I'll show you how to do that by hand. So once we're done with that, we can change the settings on the system from a DHCP, which is what I was using to, you know, uh, do this setup and pull the correct packages off the internet to a static setup. So I'm going to use a crossover cable between the computer and the development board. So if I do sudo gedit etc network interfaces we can see that eth0 is set up with DHCP. Instead I'm going to move that to static give it 192.168.1.1 and the proper net mask. Now we will have to either reboot or do an if up if down. So right now if I do if config you can see here it's it's got an IP address that it's gotten off of the the network but I can do a sudo if down oops eat zero And here you can see that the address is changed to 192.168.1.1, which is what we'll be using from here on out. The next step, now that we have all those packages installed, um, is to rebuild the Linux kernel. So I'm in the SDK. The, there's two things that are important. The Linux dev kit You'll notice it has these sys roots, one for the ARM and one for the x86 computer or 686 computer. Our cross-compile tools are loaded are located in this i686 sys root. So under Linux Dev Kit sys roots user bin. you see here the names of the cross compile tools now you could copy this sysroot um, if you wanted you could do sudo copy recursive linux dev kit sysroots i686 asterisk into slash and what that'll do is it'll copy all of this into your system you, you can do that, but it may overwrite some tools that you're already using, and it may create conflicts. So what I'm going to do instead is keep these where they are inside the SDK, and you'll see that when we rebuild the Linux kernel, we'll just update our path information. But that's where those are located. And then if I go into board support, this is where the U-boot source code, the Linux kernel source code, etc. is. Um, and here's the Linux kernel. Now I've taken the liberty already of creating a file called build.sh. So let's take a look at that. Here's build.sh. And I'm going to comment out these last few lines. And go ahead and put these first two in. So the first thing we do in this script is we update the path variable and this you may recall is the location of those cross compile tools. Then I'm creating an architecture environment variable and a cross compile environment variable. This prepended ARM Linux GNU EABI HF that is if you if we scroll back up to our cross compile tools that's the name of the cross compile tools as you see here everything that comes before the AR or CPP or G++ or GCC etc and then MR proper is a clean command what MR proper will do is any intermediate files in the Linux source code which are .o files or any executables that were built anything that's not source will be removed or cleaned out then we're going to load the default configuration for the AM335X EVM and then do make menu config. And I'll show you what make menu config is. But make menu config is going to allow us to embed the debug information into the kernel when it builds.
One last thing here with this TISDK EVM def config. How would we know the name of that if it wasn't given to you? Well, let's take a look here and just do a list arch arm configs. So under arch arm configs, there's a whole bunch of different configurations. These are all the different devices or boards that are based on the ARM that the Linux kernel, somebody has submitted a default configuration for it. One of those is the TI SDK AM335X EVM def config. So that's where that comes from. And now we're ready to do build.sh. And what this is going to do is it's going to clean everything out. And then it's going to load up the default configuration and finally bring us into menu config. This is what menu config looks like. It's a graphical tool that you can use to load various modules into the Linux kernel. So let's start by going down to kernel hacking. You can press either enter or spacebar to go into the sub menu. And then we're going to look for a couple of items here. The first is kernel debugging. Again, enter or spacebar will build the kernel debugging feature in. I can then scroll down to compile the kernel with debug info. Select that. And finally, we're going to go to enable stack unwinding support, which is down here, and select that. So those three items that we've selected in the kernel hacking subdirectory, then I'll just press exit with enter. And then one last thing that we need to check, it's actually already configured for us, but under general setup, make sure that this prompt for development and or incomplete code and drivers is selected, which it is. Then I'll exit, and when I exit again, it'll ask if I want to save this new configuration. Obviously, we want to do yes in order to save that. Notice here that it tells us configuration was written to dot config. This is a hidden file in the current directory. In Linux, anything that begins with a period won't be listed unless you either ask for it by name or you do an ls with dash a. But you'll notice that there is a hidden file here called dot config. Now the last step I'm going to do is remember how our default configurations are in that arch arm configs directory. What I'm going to do is copy our config into arch arm configs am335x evm debug def config. You can name it whatever you want, but it has to end in underscore def config. So I'll take the modified version that has this debug information built into it, create a new default configuration from it. Now I can go to gedit our build shell script, and I'm going to take out the default configuration in menu config and add in these last three. So we start by, instead of loading the default configuration for the SDK, we're going to load this new configuration that we just created by adding the debug information in. Then I'll just say make U image, and it actually will be placed into arch arm boot U image, and I'm going to copy that into the TFTP boot directory. Remember, the TFTP boot directory is the default TFTP directory that was just created when we ran the setup script from the SDK. I'll save that. Then we'll run build.sh. This will rebuild the Linux kernel with that default configuration. One thing that's nice about having created this new default configuration, if you wanted to, you could actually import the entire Linux kernel code into Code Composer Studio and just turn these steps that I put into build.sh into build steps inside a CCS.
I'm not going to record. It, it, it will take about 10 minutes for it to do all this, so I'll pause the recording, and then we'll come back at the end. Assuming that you get a successful build, this is more or less what you should see at the end. Uh, you see it says Arch Arm Boot U image is ready, meaning it had built correctly. And we see that it's been copied into TFTP boot. As a matter of fact, um, that U image AM335XEVM.bin, that was installed by the SDK, but I'm going to just remove it so that we don't have any confusion. This concludes Module 8 of the Linux BoardPort Online series. Please proceed to Module 9, where I'll show you how to set up a BeagleBone board to boot from an SD or multimedia card using U-Boot and the SPL from the multimedia card, but booting the Linux kernel using TFTP.